Let's build some fall pumpkins today. What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to Horticulture Geek. I'm Ray. Thank you so much for joining me today here in the garden. And that's right, we are going to be building some wooden pumpkins today. I'm so excited for this project, but I wanted to tell you right off the bat, um, this is going to be a lengthy video. Um, so if you are a visual learner, you're going to appreciate this because I've tried to show you step by step how this process will work. If you're not necessarily a visual learner, just it is, hopefully you will like it, but it will be a little bit of a lengthy video and feel free to skip around and just get the gist of the points. Um, but we are going to build some wooden pumpkins today that we can use in our fall displays and I'm so excited to show them to you and show you how I build them. So let's turn the camera around and get right to it. Here we go. All right, so here they are up close. So they are just wooden pumpkins that we have painted and stained. Um, and I think they look really good. I'm a little biased, obviously, because I built these, I made these. But this is exactly what we're going to be recreating today, and I'm going to show you what you need. Um, so the first thing you're going to need is boards, okay? So we're just using cheap pine uh, one by stock, furring strips, I think is what these are called in the store. Um, these are under $2 a board, so they're really economical. Uh, they may be a little over $2 a board, but they're certainly not more than $3 a board. Um, I wouldn't pay any more than $3 a board for them. Um, they are about 10 feet long. Um, the next thing I've got, I've got gloves, wood glue. Now, I have a um, reciprocal saw, a reciprocating saw, um, to cut out some of these swoops and curves. But now if you don't have this, that is okay. An old fashioned hand saw will work. Um, whatever you have, use it. Uh, this does make the job go faster, but I understand not everybody has these and that's perfectly fine. This job can be done with these because it's really not a lot of cutting. It's just rounding over the edges. All right, then I'm gonna have a sander. And again, I have a hand sander here, but if you don't have an electric hand sander, just some sanding paper or a sanding block or a sanding sponge that you can pick up at the dollar store. You can pick them up at any Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, anything will work. You just need to sand your wood to make sure that there's no rough edges and splinters, especially after we trim and cut. Then I've got some wood screws. I've got some rags that have been, so it's an old towel that I've torn up into rags. I've got some lacquer. I've got our paint, so yellow, green, and orange. I've got some sponge brushes. I've got some stain, a drill bit. If you don't have an electric drill, that's fine. A standard hand screwdriver, screwdriver will do if that's what you have. And then I have some small boards. Again, you pick these up at your Home Depot or Lowe's um, in the lumber department. If you have a lumber store near you, they will have these. Um, and these are just little strips of wood, usually in the craft wood section or the hobby project wood section. And that's where these are. Um, like at Lowe's. So these are when the hobby craft wood kind of near the banisters and all that kind of stuff. So you'll just need these. And these, here, let me go over here to these pumpkins. I'll turn one around. You can see what you'll need those for is to secure the backs of your pumpkins. All right, so I've showed you everything we need to do this project and it really isn't that much stuff. Um, and again, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Um, I'm going to show you how I do it. Feel free to take liberties with this. Use the materials you have. Use the supplies you have. If you have pallet boards that were free, use those. If you have scrap wood from a previous project sitting in the barn, use that. Use whatever you have. If you don't have these tools, use hand tools. You can do this project. It's super simple. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you, um, oh, I didn't have a pen over there. I don't think I mentioned that. You'll need a pen or a pencil. 
So I'm gonna get myself set up um, and then I'm gonna show you how to get the shapes. So I'll be right back. Okay, here I am back and I've set the example pumpkins in the floor and I, I just use an old card table for stuff like this. Um, again, use what you have. If you have a nice fancy workspace, great. If you have the back of a truck, great. Whatever you gotta use, use it. The whole name of the game here for us gardeners is cheap, cheap, cheap. Because the less money we can spend on stuff like this, the more money we have to spend on our plants. So, all I'm gonna do now is I've got three of these boards laid out. And I've just eyeballed them and leveled them up. And I'm gonna start out trying to remake this tall one. So, I've just taken one of my fern strips and I have put it to a distance that looks tall enough. Um, and you can just eyeball this. Um, how, you can measure it out however you want. All right, now if you're the type of person that likes to be exact, um, about two feet and one inch is what I have. Um, you can go two feet, you can go two, uh, two inches, whatever, it's whatever you wanna do. But two feet, one inches sounds good to me, so that's what we're doing. So all I've got to do now is take my pen and I'm gonna make my line and that's just the line that I'll cut on, okay? And I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut these boards, and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that I have this line marked, um, I went ahead, my next size down is about a foot and 17, so I've just done the same thing, and I've marked it out here. Um, and I'm gonna mark that line, and now I'm gonna cut these out. I'm actually, I'm gonna be using my chop saw to do this. This is another optional tool. Since I have it, I'm gonna use it. Um, but if you don't have that chop saw, you know, and you wanted to use this or this, uh, so you really, it's not, it's not an exact science, it doesn't matter, but that's just how I'm choosing to do it. So I'm gonna take this over the chop saw, and I'm gonna chop it here. And I'm gonna chop all three here, and then I'm gonna use one of these to line up and chop some more at the chop saw. So I'm gonna set the camera up and just let you watch through that process. All right, so for one of these pumpkin slats, so for this slower here, this is a separate um, stem that I have attached on the back that I made as a separate chunk. Um, and I started to do that again. And you can see I've got three boards here. I was gonna do it the exact same way. But then I got to thinking I want about doing it this way. So I've got, this is the length, and then I just hand drew a stem and chopped it off there. So then I'll use my uh, little saw to cut that out. That way my stem is attached to the wood um, and it'll be more secure. So that's one thing I'm gonna do with this set that is different from that set. So let's see how it goes. And then I've got my other pieces here for the middle sized one. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna take the middle one out, draw a stem, cut it a little longer. So I'm gonna do that. And then with the other scrap boards that I have there, I'm gonna measure out the size for that and we're gonna get that cut out as well. I'm gonna set the camera up and keep working. All right, the next size that I'm gonna cut is for the small pumpkin and it's only about a foot in length. And so again, you can make it really any size you want. You just wanna kinda of make it proportionate so just like you would have different size pumpkins, real pumpkins that you either grow or buy at a produce stand or at the market, you know, you're not gonna put three orange pumpkins of the exact same size stacked up on top of each other. Most of us wouldn't do that. So you wanna keep the same thing in your head. So you just wanna keep the three pumpkins kind of at different size, different widths, um, different colors, and it's gonna make it look better. You've seen the example. So one foot is what I'm going for for the next size pumpkin. All 
All right, so now that I've got my stems drawn on there, um, I'm going to use the skill saw and cut those out. All right, so now that I've got my stem pieces cut out and I've got everything cut to length, it's time to start sanding. So I've got to get all these, because you can see, obviously that left some splinters and some rough edges. So we're just gonna sand all that out. Okay, so this one is that small one right here. And you can see I decided to do a little different and I'm making the stem over two boards. Now, it will be spread out a little bit, but I'm hoping that it will still look good when it's all done. So the next step is to get your curves. So you can see I've got curves there. So all I'm doing here is freehanding it. So I'm just gonna start from here and kind of swoop down. So however you wanna freehand your curves, and if you want to kind of swoop them in a little bit and make them rough, however you wanna do it. Um, and let me go back here to my examples and I'll show you. You can see on this one, I just left them pretty circular all the way around. I mean, they're not perfectly symmetrical by any way, shape, or form, but for the most part, it's a circle. And then on this one, you can see I did kind of scallop it a little bit, just slightly, just to give it some definition. Whereas on the tall one, it's just kind of straight, okay? Because that's just how it looks. That's just how it works out. So... I'm gonna get my curves on, get the curves cut out, and then I'm gonna sand. All right, so I wanted to show you where they are at this stage of the process. So like I said, I've got all my corners cut. I put a few squirrely divots in this one, um, and this is only three boards. So those three boards that I bought um, have done all of these, and then you see my pile of mess, and I do still have some pieces left to build the bases. So the bases will be in a little bit. So right now, like I've said, I'm gonna sand these down, get them smoothed up, and then we're gonna paint. So I've got the pieces all sanded, smoothed out all the rough edges, all the corners, got everything nice and good. And so now we're time to paint and stain. So the first thing I'm going to do is put a little stain on the stems and then the bases will also get stained. I'm gonna let the stems dry for a minute and then I'm gonna do the paint on the wood. Um, and the reason I'm going to do the stain first is because I'm not going to tape it off. I'm just going to go ahead and stain it. And if a little runs through, it's fine. And then when the paint goes over, it'll just look like the stem is, is more attached to the pumpkin. It'll look more natural, I feel like. So I am going to take my rag that I have used here. Um, and we're going to do kind of a, well, just a light dab and then a, a polish so that we don't get too much stain on the woods. We don't want it to be um, overdone. So I'm just gonna start working on that.
All right, so now that I've got the stems all stained, I went ahead and cut my bases. And you can cut your bases any length you want. Um, I like to keep mine about uh, the same width of each pumpkin with a little overhang for stability. Again, this is that same three boards I was working on, so I've got plenty of that. And so now that I've got this cut and I've got it sanded, there's really nothing to show that what you haven't already seen. I'm just gonna go ahead and get these bases stained as well so that all the stain can dry and then we can paint and let that dry and then we can assemble. Um, so I doubt I'm gonna let the camera roll for this process because staining wood, painting wood, it's all the same thing. You know, you've seen it once, you've seen it enough. So I'm just gonna start staining and I'll be back in a minute. All right, so my stain has dried and it's time to paint. And what I have picked up here is just sample paint from Lowe's. That's where I went, I went to Lowe's. Now, if you're a paint hoarder, you can obviously use any paint you have. Like if you have paints laid around for crafts or other projects, heck, maybe you painted a bathroom green two years ago and you've got that half can of used green paint sitting in your garage. Use what you have. If you don't have paint or if you just want fresh paint, go get the sample size. Um, it's really inexpensive. They'll color match it. And this is an exterior orange sample size under $4. So I'm going to use this. Now, if you can see from my example pieces there, my goal here is not to paint this wood. You still want to be able to see some of the wood grain coming through, um, and then we will kind of burnish it or antique it at the end. But for right now, all I'm going to do is take another cloth, and I'm going to rag paint my, my wood here. So I'm gonna do orange, green, and yellow with just an old rag and my sample paint. And now this is an exterior grade paint because I want this to hold up in the weather. So I'm going to start painting. Here we go. All right, so here we are. I've got them all painted. Um, I've painted both sides of the wood. Everything's dry. It's set overnight. This is actually a new day. And so now we're at the point where we're ready to start putting them together and bracing them. And that's where these wooden strips come in. So all you have to do next is have this wooden strip. And again, I bought these wooden strips, but if you have scrap wood or pieces like this that you already have, you can make anything work. You don't necessarily have to go out and buy these exact things. Um, the more creative, the better. You make it however you can make it, whatever you can afford or whatever your brain lets you come up with. Use that, that'll be great. So this is real simple though. All we do is lay our slat down and there's no exact measurement. You just wanna have a little end hang, you know, you know, a little indentation on each side. You just draw a line. And then this one board will do both of these. So about right there, 
you know, somewhere around in there, we just draw a line. And that's our rough cut, and then we just screw them together, and then our pumpkins are formed. So I'm going to get all of these marked out, put them all on the chop saw or hand saw, saw or circuit, whatever saw you have. I'm gonna get these cut, and I'm gonna use my chop saw. Sorry, fast movement there. And then we're gonna start screwing our pumpkins together. And then once we have them screwed together, we can then take our bases and attach our bases. So here we go. All right, so through the magic of YouTube, I have all those pieces cut. And you can either at this point, you can see my originals. I leave a little space in between my boards. You don't have to do that. You can butt them flush up if that's the look you like, or you can pull them apart slightly. So I'm pulling mine apart slightly. I'm not measuring this. I'm not trying to be precise. I'm, I'm just eyeballing it. You want it to look even, but you don't necessarily want it to look perfect because these are rustic pumpkins. They're not supposed to be machine made. They're supposed to be handmade, homemade. You did this yourself. So this is a situation where exact measurements really don't have to come into play. Just eyeball it and make it look good. And then we're gonna take our wood screws and I'm gonna start screwing these together. So here we go. Okay, so I've got my boards here. I've got my drill bit and I am going to be using our wood glue at this point as well. Um, now you don't wanna like slather this on there. So I'm just gonna put a few dabs of wood glue just to secure it. You'll see me do that just to help hold everything and keep everything nice and secure and keep it from shifting around too much. You don't necessarily have to do this, but it's a good idea. All right, guys, here it is. So I've got them all glued and screwed together. So they are holding firm. They are one solid piece now. So we just gotta let that glue dry. And now if you wanted to, side note here, you could stop right here. So if you're not worried about having these be freestanding on a stand, maybe you just wanna prop them up against a hay bale or prop them up against the side of a porch, or maybe you wanna hang them on a wall, you would stop right here. You don't need a base if you're just gonna do that, okay? What you could do is just come in and put like a regular uh, picture hanger here, hang it on a wall, um, do whatever you wanted to do at this point. But for me, I really like how these, I'm able to set them down and they're able to stand up wherever I wanna plop them down. So I'm gonna continue on and put bases on mine um, and I'll be back to do that here in just a minute. All right, so my pumpkin is all ready to go. I'm ready to put the bases on them. So all I'm gonna do is take my base and I'm going to set it down here. I'm gonna try to hold the camera where you guys can see. And I'm just gonna position my pumpkin on the base until I feel like it's pretty centered. And again, if you wanna pull out a tape measure and measure this and make it precise, you can. I am just eyeballing this because it's supposed to look rustic. I think it looks more fun personally, um, just like this. So I'm just gonna eyeball it. I think it looks 
pretty good there. And then what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my pen and I'll just make some light marks in front where, where those boards are. So I'm just gonna lightly make a mark kind of in the center of each board. I mean, I'm not really wanting to see this in the end. It's just a mark, okay? And so now all I have to do is get my screws started right in front of each one of those marks. And then that's how, and then I will screw up into the boards. Um, and I'm actually gonna do two screws per board. And these are gonna be longer screws. Um, so two screws per board to give it more stability. So here's how that looks. All right, so here we are. And now guys, this is just how my brain works. This is how I find it best to do this next step. So as you can see, I've got all six of my screws pre-drilled through my base. And they are poking out of the base just ever so slightly. Let me get my thumb out of the way. And then this is what I do. I turn the pumpkin upside down and I use the tips of the screws to indent into the wood. So just press down, rock it a little bit, get it lined up. And then when you take, sorry, that was blurry. When you take the base off, now you have your marks of exactly where your screws need to go. And now I can pre-drill those holes so that this wood doesn't split. Now, when you're drilling through this, it's wide. It's not gonna push apart, it shouldn't. You can pre-drill these holes. I did not, but you can, I, it, you might want to, especially if you have old wood that's a little more dried up, a little more brittle. Um, I just went ahead and plopped screws through here to get them in position with my marks that I made with my pen. But now here's a different story. I, I will pre-drill these holes because this is thin. So if I try to, oh goodness, so if I try to put a screw down through there, um, it, it's gonna wanna push out that wood and I don't want my wood to split. I don't wanna ruin my pumpkins. So I've gotta pre-drill these holes and as soon as I get those pre-drilled, then I'm gonna plop the base on. So here we go. All right, guys, I've got the bases attached. They're standing up right. And then there's one last step that I'm going to do, which if you remember back from our examples that I showed you, they were antique or burnished. And so I'm gonna be doing that. And so I've got my stain, a glove, um, a foam brush, and a rag. And I'm gonna be hitting the edges of these and kind of antiquing them a little bit. And then once that's set, dry, and done, I mean, this is obviously an optional step. So if you wanna skip this step, if you're satisfied with them the way they are right now, when you make yours, then just stop right here and be done. You do not have to do this next step. I tend to like it. Um, and then what it's fixing to say is once I'm done antiquing these, like if you um, want to, the very, very final last step is to lacquer it. If you want to lacquer it, to keep it to keep let them hold up more now this obviously is going to put like a shine on them um, so for these right here i'm not really looking for a shine so i'm not going to do this um, but you absolutely could especially if you're going to if you're wanting to use these out in the garden like in the elements so not under a porch or not in the house you may want to put something on there to protect this finish so that you can keep these for years and years um, i'm going to skip this step because i don't think it's going to be needed um, these are actually going to be a gift um, and i suspect the person that i'm going to send these to um, will either want to do their own sealant on it if they choose or I suspect that she will want them to just kind of be not shiny. So I'm going to skip the lacquer step on these. So now I'm gonna set the camera up and show you how I'm gonna burnish these or antique them. Um, and then that will be it guys, so here we go. All right, so I'm gonna duck down here where you can see me for a second. <clears throat> I moved inside the shop where the lighting was better, so hopefully you guys can see this last process. So <clears throat> in order to 
antique this. I just want to lightly put a little stain on top of the paint to make it look aged and weathered. Now to do this is we're going to be using a dry brush technique. And so that's where our foam brush comes in. So what I'm going to do with my foam brush, and I've got a rag on and I've got a, a, a cloth, is I'm going to just lightly dab my foam brush into the stain and I'm going to wipe most of that off right there at the can. And then I'm going to take my rag and I'm going to blot that dry. I want to get most of that stain back off. Now that I have a light, just a any bit of stain left in here, it's not soppy wet, I'm just going to drag that around. Drag it around the edges. Anywhere that would get natural wear and tear, you just kind of want to drag it around the edges. And let me bring you in for a close up and you can see. If I can get it to focus. So you can see I've just kind of put an age on the edge there. Um, that's a little fleck of something. So just a slight age around the edge. So I'm going to continue to dry brush this out. Um, and this is also a good time if you've nicked your base or your um, stem um, while you were attaching the base. This is a great time to hit that with a little follow-up stain um, just to make sure that it looks the way you want it to look. So I'm going to continue dry brushing these. And then we will be back in just no time at all for you for the final reveal. All right, so here's our finished product, ready to go. So I, like I said, I'm, these are gonna be a gift for somebody special. Um, so hopefully I'm gonna get these in the mail to her. They're gonna be a gift, so these are finished now. I hope you've enjoyed seeing them. Let me get up close and you can see the kind of the, the antiquing around the edges. To me, it just adds depth, so I really like that. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. I know it was lengthy and I tried to cut down as much as I could without cutting out some of the more visual pieces because I know some people are visual learners and you want to actually see things being done. Um, if you're not a visual learner, this video was probably way too long for you and I apologize, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, either way you go. Again, the whole point of this was to show you guys to be creative, what you can do in the garden, think outside the box. Um, Cause I know if you're a gardener like me, it's fall time and we all start thinking about pumpkins and gourds and mums and all that stuff. And those things add up. Um, and if you're rebuying fresh gourds and fresh pumpkins every single year, that can get very expensive. So these wooden pumpkins are something that you can make very economically. You have pride and ownership that you did it yourself. Um, you can customize them to whatever colors you're going with. And then you have them from year after year and they're substantial pieces. And so these really do take up a lot of space in a fall display. So you don't feel like you have to go out and buy as many pumpkins and gourds for real, like live pumpkins to fill in around them. So I just hope you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully it's inspired you. And again, remember, do it your own way. This is just how I do it, not how you should necessarily do it. But if you want to follow my steps directly, then I think you'll have a fantastic product. Um, and if you choose to go outside the box and get even more creative than I did, then more power to you. Shoot me a photo of what you do and let me see how it works. I would love to see anyone that builds these pumpkins, what colors you use, what shapes you go with, and how they turn out for you. So don't forget to tag me in those photos. Um, I'm on Facebook and here on YouTube. Guys, if you've enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. And hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that because you never know what other projects we're going to come up with here in the Horticulture Geek Gardens. 
But until next time, guys, from my garden to yours, I wish you all the best and happy gardening. Mm -hmm.